heading to Minneapolis and St. Paul and the surrounding region. Who do I have? Do we have Sarah? Is Sarah Seidner back with us? We don't have Sarah Seidner. Again, so let's put up these pictures and talk about what's happened, what has been happening here, and as we have been talking to our, our people on the ground and our law enforcement folks. Of course, this is over the death of 46-year-old George Floyd in police uh, custody, an officer with his knee on his neck. The community is frustrated. Uh, protesters began to protest, and then it got out of control sometime this evening. And as you can see, the fire started, uh, and then they went, according to our Sarah Seidner, and tried to knock, it, knock down a fence that was erected recently and temporarily around the police station to protect that police station. That did not work. Pro protesters started knocking on the pro police precinct on the walls and trying to get into the precinct. They evacuated all the personnel, according to the Minneapolis Police Department, evacuated the personnel there. And then the protesters set the building on fire. Again, the third precinct in Minneapolis, Minnesota, set on fire moments ago, burning out of control now because there is no fire department on scene. There are no police, police officers on scene. Uh, the police officers have left. The fire department is not coming. They have made a calculated decision, again, according to our Josh uh, Campbell, who is a law enforcement expert here on CNN. This is a calculated decision on their part to allow this to happen because they don't want any more loss of life. Charles Ramsey is the former police chief of Washington, D.C., the former police commissioner uh, of Philadelphia. He is our um, law enforcement analyst here on CNN. So, Charles Ramsey, as we look at these pictures now from Minneapolis, Minnesota, again, a calculated decision uh, on behalf or on the part of uh, the Minneapolis Police Department so that they wouldn't lose any more life here. Well, I don't know how calculated it was, but it is what it is. I mean, they're surrounded. They, people would uh, break into the station, start setting fires. They evacuated the station. Again, uh, this is just a terrible situation all the way around. Uh, certainly, they didn't anticipate this happening. I'm talking about uh, uh, the police. Um, but, you know, they got people out of there to save lives, both of the police officers as well as uh, the people there uh, demonstrating and, and uh, causing the... Uh, um, the fire to have occurred there. I want to get your reaction to the National Guard because I, the Saint, I know that the St. Paul mayor for sure uh, asked for the National Guard, help from the National Guard. Now the National Guard is confirming that they are uh, headed to Minneapolis and St. Paul and the surrounding uh, area there. Your reaction to the National Guard being deployed, 500? I think it's, it, it's absolutely the right move. I hope 500 is enough, to be honest with you. Uh, they're going to have to take control of the streets, and obviously the police are overwhelmed, cannot do it alone. They need the National Guard, and I don't say that lightly. I mean, I've worked in a lot of different places, and the last thing you want to do is bring in the National Guard if you don't have to. But this has gotten totally out of control, and they're going to have to bring in uh, the National Guard to establish order. This is not going to stop on its own. It's going to continue to intensify. So the quicker they get enough resources out there to calm things down, to protect property, protect lives, the better off everyone's going to be. And again, it's not just Minneapolis. They've got to protect St. Paul. They've got to uh, mm -hmm. uh, protect surrounding um, um, areas as well. These are live ground pictures now. Uh, this is from our CNN camera uh, of Minneapolis. This is where um, Sarah Seidner and Josh Campbell will join us from this, this camera location uh, in moments. They were moved back to a safe distance uh, so that they can continue to report. But these are live pictures outside the Minneapolis Police Department. You can see protesters standing dangerously close to the fire. Uh, and you can see the words up on the screen right in the middle, Minneapolis Police. Again, the third precinct on fire. Um, the police department said that their staff at the third precinct was evacuated. Uh, the director of office, the Office of Public Safety and information saying protesters forcibly entered the building and ignited several fires. What, uh, before we get back to Sarah and Josh, I just want to ask you, Chief Ramsey, if you can please explain to us, what will the National Guard do that police are not able to do here? They'll provide some additional uh, protection in key areas of the city to protect uh, property and assist any way they can. The, the, the Minneapolis and St. Paul Police Departments will still have the lead, but they will be there to support them any way they can and be deployed. Their visible presence alone will make a difference. Um, so, um, again, 
they do come in in situations like this when asked or activated by the governor. And this is a case where they are definitely needed. I just hope 500 is enough. Chief Charles Ramsey joining us uh, by phone this evening for this incredible, unprecedented uh, story. Um, I have never seen in my years a police precinct go up in flame, at least not live on television in a situation like this. Chief Ramsey, stand by. We want to get, we'll get back to you. We want to get to our reporters uh, who are